Hi, I'm Lita Ford. This is jamplay.com. We're going to talk about being in the recording studio. Things have changed so much over the years. When I did my first album was 1975 with The Runaways. When the first album came out, it was 1976. So since 1976, a lot has changed. It used to be analog, where you would go into a 24-track recording studio or more tracks, and you were able to lay down the drums, overdub anything you wanted to overdub. And now we have Pro Tools, um, which is great. You can do anything you want to do with Pro Tools, just like with analog. Now everything's digital. Living Like a Runaway, which was my last album, was done all digitally at Gary Hoey's recording studio called Wazoo Studios. And uh, he called me on the phone and, and said, Lita, I have a studio. Why don't you come down and record? So I took him up on the offer and we ended up doing the entire album. But it was a lot of fun sitting in the studio recording and working with Pro Tools. Pro Tools is something that if you don't know how to use them, you need to take a course, I suggest, in learning how to use Pro Tools, and learning how to record an artist, learning how to get different sounds. You can still use your favorite amps. You don't have to plug into some sort of device that gives you different sounds. You can still use your favorite amplifier, which I did do on Living Like a Runaway. Um, we had uh, Soldano. Um, Soldanos are great amps. I, I love my Soldanos. Uh, and we had a JCM 800, which the older models, I feel, are something that you can't beat. Um, the sound, you can't go wrong with a JCM 800. You can get various sounds out of a JCM 800. If you want a clean sound, or a distorted sound, you can get it all out of the JCM 800s. But uh, recording in general now, it's much cleaner. It has, it doesn't have as much hiss when you record digitally. And it still has the punch and it still has the balls. But it just seems to go by quicker. Everything is much more cleaner. You can put everything in an MP3 file and email it to your record company or email it to your bass player, uh, email it to your lead singer. If you want, they can overdub their lead vocal tracks, email it back to you and you have a finished vocal. So today's recording is much, much simpler than it used to be. There are guitars that I would use in the recording studio, and I would not necessarily want to use them live. Some of those, um, well, they're, they're overdubbed. So you could have a, a Telecaster, like in Living, Living Like a Runaway is a Telecaster. And then the Black Warlock is overdubbed for the guitar solo and the guitar lead. So you have two completely different sounds, and it makes up one song. You want to have a guitar that has a lot of punch and a lot of crunch, and your favorite guitar that you have that you want to play lead on. And then you have your guitars that you do your overdubs with that gives you certain sounds. For instance, the Telecaster on Living Like a Runaway. That we don't play so much live as we would in the studio because you can always get that sound that's close. It's not something you'd want to record with, but it's close enough that you can perform live with the same guitar as opposed to the actual recording. Acoustic guitars do the similar thing where they would give you a strumming sound that you may not necessarily need live but it would give you a certain strum that would accent a part in the recording studio where you wouldn't need it live. Um, so have a, have a certain selection of guitars when you do go into the recording studio. Try to have an acoustic, try to have your clean sound, and try to have your dirty sound, depending on what you're recording.
It's always good to have a selection of guitars. Don't rely on just the amps. And it's also good to have a selection of different amps. Two good amps would be great. If you have one that makes a good clean sound, um, say for instance, say for instance, a Fender Twin Reverb um, or a Fender Vibra King, those are good for good clean sounds with a Tele or with a Strat. And then again, your Marshall, whether it's a 900, an 800, a 2000, whatever it is that you like, it's good to have a variation of different instruments in the studio. We talked about being creative melodically on your riffs writing something that is meaningful and not just rattling off a bunch of notes. Now is the time to try and use those riffs in the recording studio. While you're writing a song, try and get that melodic riff incorporated into your song, but make it so it fits the vocal line. Don't forget about the vocal melody. Keep that vocal melody, but use it on guitar as well as the vocals get that guitar that, that, that sings the most. Maybe you use the dirty sound for your melodic riffs. Maybe you use the cleaner sound for what's going underneath those melodic riffs and try and incorporate it into your song. Make it original and uh, make it unique. Make it yours. Steal from the best though. Always steal from the best, but make it yours and make it original. Producers are one thing that is extremely, extremely important in the recording studio. Just because somebody has a big name doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be the right person for the job. It's, it's almost like going shopping for a wardrobe. Just because something has a name and a, and a well-known tag on it doesn't mean that it's going to look good on you. So you want to make sure that you find the right producer for your style of music and make sure that he's able to wrap his head around or her head around what you're going to record. When I did Living Like a Runaway, I went through so many people trying to find the right record producer for the album. And I couldn't, I couldn't find the right record producer. I went through so many famous record producers, but they weren't able to wrap their head around the project. And when I met Gary Hoey, he was able to capture what I was trying to put down as an album and record. He was able to capture my sound, my feel, my direction that I was trying to go in in its entirety, not just one song, the entire album. Gary was able to finish sentences where I would begin a sentence because he understood where I was coming from as a musician and as a guitar player, as a singer, as a songwriter. And this is something that you need to take into consideration. Don't just go with somebody because they have a big name. They can destroy you as well as they can make you better. So make sure they're able to wrap their head around what you are trying to do as an artist and as a singer and as a songwriter. This is Lita Ford. This is jamplay.com.